This is the revised version of the Say It Ateca. Yes, the end of last year started this year. It got a facelift on the front. No, an actual facelift. They've put LED lights across the range and they've got that diamond display look that you'll get on the new Leon and the Say It Taraco. But this car is competing in a really crowded space. Within its own family, you've got the Skoda Karak, for example. And then you've got loads of other cars like the Peugeot 3008 and I've reviewed them all so I'm well capable of actually comparing this car with the others. No plug-in hybrids just yet, no electric yet, that's just not a thing at the moment. But there are a couple of petrol engines and there's a couple of diesel engines. You can get all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, they really actually have spoiled you for choice and the trim levels. You've got SE, you've got F4, and you've got Experience. They've tried at least to make it just a bit more or less complicated. The revised attack starts from just under 32,000 euro and you can go right up till 37,000 if you want. Interestingly, in the diesel versions, they're both two liter TDIs. One is 115 brake horsepower and one is 150 brake horsepower. And you'll actually be surprised at how narrow the gap is in cost between the two power outputs. I'll explain more later on in the video. And yes, can you fit two or three child seats into the Ateca? Is there room for an Isofix fix in the front? And can you get a middle passenger in between those two child seats if you're in the back seats? I'll reveal all. If you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, please do. The boot is over 500 litres as standard. And this is where I think it's gonna have a bit of an edge with some of the competition. There's nothing necessarily fancy about it. It's just a good, honest boot. A bit like the Ateca, really. It's just a good, honest car. So there's no removable shelves. There's no charging options. There is a light. Uh, no fancy handles for dropping that set of seats. But if you do, it's kind of a 70-30 thing. This parcel shelf that can fit in the boot. In fact, the cuts around the arches into the boot, you'd nearly think they've deliberately shaped it so that parcel shelf works. These now sweep in the revised version of it and they've hidden the exhausts. They've just covered it up with a different toned color valance down the bottom. It's okay, there's no fake exhaust and everyone's able to move on with their life. Before I show you what the interior rear space is like, I'm actually just going to double check this boot is closed because it's really tricky to close first time. Nearly every time I try and do it, I don't close the boot. I get in, I start the car, there's the red little display to say, you've left your boot open, you dope. And I've got to, got to go back and, and sort it out. So if you can get an electric tailgate, I think I would. It'd save you a lot of grief. Leg room in the Leon has been better than the Golf. And is this better than the Karak, for example? The experienced version of the car will come with leather as standard, and I think I'd go for that, particularly if you've got brats like me who like to kick the backs of seats, because then they're easy to wipe. You get two eyes of fix back here. You will fit three people. If you put the two child seats in, it means the center bit, a little bit compromised. You're not gonna get a massive person in there by any stretch of the imagination. Welcome back. But you do get an armrest. I mean, God, Keith Barry is nothing on me. Down here, USB-C adapters. There's going to be a need for those 10 euro things. Unless you get them from China, they might cost you less. Two air vents, no individual climate control. The rear windows, do they go all the way down? Yes, they do. Little things like that will wreck kids' heads if they don't. You get two back seat pockets, really high raised seat off the floor, which means you can really stretch out in the leg department. And I think head height, LED lights. There's a few little things going on like you might find in a Skoda. I'll show you something else in a minute, but there's little hooks here for coats and stuff. When you sit in the back of this thing, you're gonna feel like you're actually in 2021 with the modern touches. There's nice leather finishes on the door cards and LED lights complete the whole modern feel of the back of the Ateca. 
Another car that's similar size, similar price, and very much competing in this segment is the Peugeot 3008, and I've also reviewed that, and if you'd like to check out that review, it's up there right now. A couple of things I love about the Ateca, you get wireless charging. Drop the phone down, never run out of battery again. Nice. Under here, in a Skoda kind of vein, is a shelf that you can securely hide things in. So when you're finished charging your phone, maybe you don't want to bring it with you because you want some peace. Put it in there and go for a walk. There's more USB-C charging bits under here. There's a 12 volt cup holder space. There's the chili bottles that you can buy if you'd like to support the channel. And in fact, there's PayPal links and Patreon links also below if you'd like to support what we're doing here independently. Under here is more room under your armrest, and that is extendable, height adjustable. They're the little things that Volkswagen, Audi, Skoda, and Seat all get really right. The bolsters in this experienced model are really kind of wide and supportive. There's no heated steering wheel in this car. You kind of might have maybe thought there would have been. In this version, although in the F4 you will get digital dials, You've got analog clocks. Does make it feel a little bit outdated. And if you match up what's going on here with that, it's like, why is that so fancy? Why is that not so fancy? Physical dials for aircon. You can do it through a menu on the screen, but you can also use knobs if you'd like. And this also is parking assist on the experienced model. And if you press it, someone somewhere will park the car for you. I've never managed to get it to work in any car. An aspect of the Seat that does take getting used to is this touch screen. It's not that it's hard to use as such, it's just I don't find it as easy to use as something that's in the Skoda. There's a home button there on a the Skoda. I just want the map. I don't want to search for anything. I want to, I want to see the map because it looks nice. Where is it? Is it here? No. Uh, it's not the easiest system to use compared to some of its cousins. On the plus side, you're going to get a bit more tech for your money in a Seat. So you've got adaptive cruise control. You can control how far the car is in front of you or how close you want the car to get to. It's also got travel assist. So if you're in cruise control and you come up to a 60 km an hour signpost, even though you're doing 100, the car will automatically slow down for you. And those little things are stuff that you'll probably have to pay even more for in between trim levels if you're going for something that isn't a Seat. Gear changes are really quick in the Seat. No surprises there. It's a seven speed DSG gearbox. Obviously you can get this with a manual also. The two liter TDI versions are 115 brake horsepower and 150 brake horsepower. There's a 1300 euro jump, which is maybe less than, well certainly I would have estimated. When I saw that, I was like, oh, that's, that's not too bad. And then the petrol versions, you can get a 150 uh, brake horsepower petrol 1.5. That really is the kind of the sweet spot. The 1.5 engine is really economical to use in the petrol version. And if you do lots of driving and maybe overtaking, you might want to consider the 150 brake horsepower diesel version. Now it's set up uh, firm enough, like say it always try and get the handling of cars right and make them a little bit sharper. And even though this is a crossover and you're sitting higher up, it does the corners fairly well. So go for the F4 version of it and you're going to feel like you can actually have a bit of fun as well. Fuel consumption, you're going to easily see sort of five liters per 100 kilometers in the two liter 150 brake horsepower version of the car, which this one is. Probably going to sit somewhere around seven, maybe eight in the petrol from memory. Certainly I wouldn't be put off getting the petrol if your miles just don't justify it. A higher up position does afford you good visibility all around the car, to be honest with you. Noise from the outside 
is quite limited. I can't hear much of what's going on outside and it's quite a blustery day. Now if you floor that diesel engine, it does get a little bit loud. Some of the attackers have capabilities where they can shut down a cylinder and even further reduce fuel consumption, particularly in the petrol versions. And generally, even in those versions, it's disguised quite well that there's three cylinder action going on. It's decent over ramps too. And these aren't the biggest wheels in the car, but it's quite soft and spongy, yet still firm enough for decent handling. So that's an interesting combination that they've managed to get right. The steering is, is numb enough in one sense, but also, I mean, I can, I can feel the surface of the road through the steering wheel. I can feel the different surface finishes all right, but it, you know, there's a, as, as you turn the wheel, it's, yeah, it's moving, but you know, it wouldn't be as sharp as direct as something else. A little bit disappointing at this price point that I'm not getting blind spot in my mirrors also. There's a lot of tech going on in this car. And if you want to stand out further from Volkswagen and maybe even Skoda, as, as I presume Sayat do, that would make it go, oh, and it has blind spot. Oh, yes, sir. Nice one, madam. And also, this engine is just tried and tested and proven. I drove it long term for must have been two maybe three months in a Skoda Octavia and it was really economical plenty of power what I like also about this engine is there's always torque ready to go there so you're never kind of left in a, a flat spot at all I'm not I'm not floating as I do that yet this is a crossover overall impressions of driving um, it's economical Handles well, DSG box is great, but I mean, that goes without saying at this stage. It's something you can just put your faith and trust in. And yeah, maybe if you want something that has a little bit of a handling edge over other crossovers, this is another reason to check out the Ateca. Time for my overall impression of the revised Say It Ateca. Well, it's a car that I could recommend to someone's mammy, to someone's family, or an F4 spec, to someone who wants something that looks good, but wants a bit more space, or wants that advanced higher up seating position that you'll get in a crossover. This car is around since 2016, so it was long overdue a facelift, and there's certainly loads of cars, new models and not so new models competing in this space. But does it deserve to get your eyes if you're thinking of this kind of car? Absolutely. There's so much spec that you're going to get. It's reasonably affordable at under €32,000. There's a great lineup of engine options, and Seat are generally doing really good finance rates if you are trying to PCP or HP the car. So that's also something to really consider. You probably won't get cheaper finance than what you can get from Seat. I think the boot is really usable because if you do have kids and child seats and all those things you're going to be able to fit it all in it's really a, a kind of a class leading boot space in my opinion uh, and yeah you're going to have to shortlist it with things like the 3008 and the Karak and maybe the Volkswagen Tiguan although I think people will probably perceive the Tiguan as, as a slightly bigger car we'll have the Tiguan the revised version of that to review on the channel in uh, just a couple of weeks time but as I said if a crossover is on your shortlist in 2021 you've got to check this out. As always, if you have comments or questions or thoughts on the new Seata Teca or any of the cars that compete with it, please do leave a comment below. As I mentioned earlier on in the video, there's tons of ways to support the channel. We are fully independent, so any help there is much appreciated. And at the very least, if you want to give us a subscription, we're on the way to 20,000 followers and subscribers, and we're really hoping to get there as quick as we can. So any help you can give us in that department is massively appreciated. Thank you for watching.